Hello everyone, I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, we're going to be discussing how to hear and recognize, know and discern the voice of God, the voice and thought that you're hearing. Is there some clue or some way that you can determine, is this me? Is this God? Is this the devil? Who is this? Should I listen to this voice? What are the dangers of entertaining all kinds of voices? Well, stick with me in this video because I think it's gonna be entertaining, educational, and I believe you're gonna learn a lot. Now, first, let's just get into some scriptures to get a context of where I'm going. In Luke 24, 13, it says, and behold, two of them, and this is talking about some disciples, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Now, I don't know about you, but this verse absolutely wrecks me when I consider the implications and meaning of what this is actually saying. Why? Because this verse is actually letting us know that as Jesus had drawn himself near and is walking with these men and talking with them and dialoguing with them, expounding scriptures to them, they do not even know that it's Jesus Christ himself. In other words, physically, they are hindered or stopped from actually seeing that the person they're actually talking to is Jesus. They see him. They see how tall this individual is. They are able to see his eye color, his hair color. They know what clothes he's wearing, what he walks like, the tone and the sound and the quality of his voice. They hear all of these things. They are seeing him with their physical eyes and at the exact same time don't even know that it is Jesus walking with them. Why? Because there are times, the Bible says, where you even entertain angels unaware and you're not even aware that what it is you're talking to, the person is actually an angel. And this is burdensome to me because I've prayed and I'm like, God, please, please don't ever come to me and hide or disguise yourself to me because I want to see you. I want to know you. I want to know you as you are, please. And it's just asking God for a favor. Please don't disguise yourself to me because if it's you, I want to know and I want to have the understanding while I'm talking to you that it's actually you. Let's go on down to verse 28. And they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went. And he, speaking about Jesus, made as though he would have gone further. In other words, Jesus was going to keep on walking and go on his way. And they never would have even known that it was Jesus. Verse 29. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And this goes back and validates something that I want you to understand. This scripture is saying that Jesus would have gone on his way and not even have tarried. They never would have known. It never would have been revealed to them that the person that they were actually talking to was none other than Jesus Christ himself, who they are discussing, concerned about, and wanting to find answers about. And the very person they're walking with, talking to, dialoguing with, is Jesus Christ, the very person of discussion. I don't think that the Bible is intending for you to bypass the fact that it said he would have just gone on his way if they had not constrained him. What does that mean? If you want to hear God, if you want to hear the Lord, then you need to be willing to entertain him. You need to not be so busy in your schedule and what it is you want to do, getting to this meal, getting to this food, getting to this function, getting to this meeting, that when the Lord is with you, you bypass the Lord to get to your schedule, to get to your outline and your bullet point list so that you can get your stuff done. And this really happens a lot to people who are very job-oriented focused and they want to get stuff done. Many times the Lord may be talking to you, dealing with you, discussing things with you, showing you things, and all you can think about is your schedule and all the things that you need to get done. These men, these two disciples, said, uh-uh, hold on. For some re we want you to be with us. For some reason, your word is just striking a chord. We'll see this in a minute. And it's just doing something to us. Please. 
and they held on to him, and they drew him in. Verse 31, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Now that word for burn right there is actually two Greek words. The first one is G2258, on, which means was, in other words, past tense. The second Greek word is G2545, kao, which means to set on fire, to make burn, to kindle, to light burning. Now I've got to pause here because this is a extremely important and critical lesson that you absolutely must get if you want to properly and accurately discern and recognize the voice of the Lord. And that is the lesson that the scriptures show us right here. What is that? They immediately took an account of what had happened when the answer came and the revelation came. In other words, how did we receive it? So to put this in context for you and I, if you're praying for a miracle, if you're praying for an answer, if you're praying to hear the voice of God, and it is revealed that what you heard, discerned, or was revealed to you was actually the Word of God. In other words, the person validates Yes, that was exactly right. Everything you told me was true. There's no way you could have known that. Nobody else knew that. What you heard was the voice of the Lord. A perfect example I can give you is I have a friend who is a prophet of God, and he had a vision of me about a certain thing a year or so ago. And he gave me this word. He said, here's what I see, and there's a vision of all this thing taking place. Well, it was not something that was even on the radar at the moment, not even the foggiest imagination in my mind at the time. And personally, I didn't see how it could even apply or whatever. But I know that he's a prophet of God, and therefore I took that word. I held on to that word. And then as the months went by, it slowly played out. And the very thing that he said and saw actually came true as impossible and unbelievable as it was, and totally not even on anybody's radar, the very thing that he saw exactly came to pass. Exactly. I mean, it exactly came to pass. And there was no possible way that anybody could ever even imagine that it even happened and came and actually was fulfilled. Well, I called the person and I said, hey, I want to let you know, whatever you saw or however you discerned that, let me tell you, it was the word of the Lord because it came to pass a year later, exactly as you said it, exactly as you saw. How does that tie into what I'm telling you? Because these men are revealed that the person they're actually talking to is none other than Jesus. And they said, you know what? Hold on, let's take an account now of what was going on while we were with him and listening to him. And they said, did not our heart burn within us when we were hearing his voice? So that's one way you learn to recognize and discern the voice of the Lord. And you may say, well, what does that mean to say that there was a burning on the inside of me? The Bible gives us a perfect illustration in Jeremiah 20 and 9, and that is, Jeremiah had the word of the Lord, and he didn't want to preach or talk to anybody about God anymore. And he said, I'm done. I'm not preaching or talking to anybody anymore. And he said, but it's like a fire shut up in my bones. And he said, in fact, I felt so on fire, and even my bones felt like they were on fire. And I could not stay. In other words, I couldn't keep my mouth shut because I felt like I was on fire on the inside. And in that Hebrew word is actually the Hebrew word leb, which means the inner man in your heart. In other words, he was on fire on the inside. And when the voice of the Lord comes to you many times, you will feel a fire or a burning on the inside of you. Why? Because Jesus Christ also went on and he said, my words are spirit and they are life. When you go to John chapter 6, verse 63, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word for quickeneth right there is G2227, zuapoeo, which means to make alive, give life, or quicken. The reason I'm highlighting that word quicken there is because it makes it alive or it comes to life. Have you ever been reading the Bible? For example, I've got my Bible right here. 
Have you ever been reading the Bible and you're reading a passage or a scripture and all of a sudden it just seems like something comes off the pages to you and you realize that the Holy Ghost is talking to you about something and maybe even like right now just thinking about it, I got tears in my eye because when I get a revelation from the Word of God, it's worth more than money to me. I mean, you can't buy a revelation of God with money and it is very precious and dear to me. But he said that the Spirit quickeneth. Now, some people may argue over their, the Spirit of God or the Spirit of man is what quickeneth. And I'll say this. To me, it doesn't matter whether it's the Spirit of God or the Spirit of man that quickens it and makes it come alive to you because my answer is going to be the same to you one way or the other. If you want the Spirit to quicken it to you, whether God's Spirit or your Spirit, whichever one, are you born again, Spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled, for the Spirit inside of you to even be made alive, to be quickened by the Holy Ghost, and for the Spirit of God to quicken things to your mind, quicken things into your spirit, and give you revelation and download that you need. It's the Spirit that quickeneth, regardless of whether it's God's Spirit or your spirit. It's coming from a spiritual realm. And therefore, you're actually going to be hearing the voice of God in your spirit. And that's why Jeremiah would say it felt like a fire shut up in my bones and I could not stay. Why? Because your whole person is alive with the fire of the Lord when you have the word of the Lord. And that's why these two men on the road to Emmaus said that it was like our heart was on fire. Our heart burned within us when I heard his words or when I heard his voice. And Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And that's another way to recognize, is this the Lord talking to me? When you hear a voice or a thought or an impression or something else, does it bring spirit and bring life? And I'm not saying that every time God speaks is going to be something positive and happy and nice. It can be a negative word, a repercussion or a warning for someone that they need to repent or a prophecy. You better repent and change your ways. However, even inside of a negative warning from the Lord, in my experience at least, and many others that I've talked to, even in a warning from the Lord, there is a quickening inside of that word that that is from the Lord. There's a burning inside of your heart that I know and I have an assurance that has the voice and the authenticity and the fragrance of the voice and feeling and impression of the Lord. And there is a life associated with it. And you may say, well, how can there be life associated with it if it's a negative warning, repercussion word, or something like that? Because you will feel the life of it trying to bring change to the person to save their life and keep them from going to hell. And so even if you're giving a negative word, you will feel spirit and you will feel life because you're trying to save the person from heartache, heartbreak, or going to hell. And God is reaching with love and mercy and grace to save that soul. So if you are receiving a word that doesn't have spirit and doesn't have life with it, you should question whether for sure or not that is the voice of the Lord or not. And this leads me to one of the main things that I want to say to you, and that is to be careful of seeking voices, because if you are looking for voices, the devil will provide you with voices. Your mind will provide you with voices. Society and culture and your friends will provide you with voices. There will be no end to the amount of voices that come, but you know what you'll be left with? You will be left with a battlefield going on in your mind where you are tormented and vexed and you can't sleep at night and you're in torment during the day because of all the thoughts that are going through your mind, all the voices that you're struggling, wrestling with. Because what happens when you push really hard to seek after the voice of the Lord and you're pursuing with all of your might to pursue after the voice of the Lord, you listen to me, I'm giving you a warning. If you're chasing with all your might, I gotta hear the voice of the Lord. I gotta hear the voice of the Lord. Guess what? It's gonna be super, super easy for the devil to come along and give you a voice. 
And if you are sitting there and straining at every voice and thought and impression and feeling and unction that comes to you to discern whether it's the voice of the Lord and you're struggling greatly with it, then you're going to be sitting there entertaining every voice. And those voices might actually be a demon or from Satan himself. And you're entertaining it because you want to see, well, is this God? Is it not God? I, I don't know. I got to feel it out. Well, in the feeling it out, you're actually entertaining a demonic voice. So please, please be careful of chasing after voices and putting your whole relationship with God based on whether you can hear his voice or not. And I'm not trying to go overboard with this and scare you, but I'm just trying to make you aware that as you're having thoughts throughout your day and you're hearing voices throughout your day and you're having all these impressions and feelings and emotions and all this stuff going on, if you think every single bit of it is God, then you're going to entertain and fleece and try to discern and wrestle with and try to the, get to the root bottom of it. And in the process, you will actually be entertaining dwelling on and meditating on a voice from Satan himself or from your own lust-driven, carnal, human flesh that's unregenerated, and you may actually go off the rails, end up falling into false doctrine, believing something wrong because you were earnestly seeking to hear the voice of God, but actually ended up entertaining the wrong voice. What do I mean? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Why did they depart from the faith? Why did they fall away from the faith? Because they were giving heed to what? To seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, those two words in the English, giving heed, is actually one Greek word, G. 4337 prosejo, which means to hold the mind or the ear towards someone, to hold a ship in a direction, to sail towards, to pay attention to, to bring near. Okay, what were they giving heed to? It says they were giving heed to seducing spirits. Now that word for spirits right there is the Greek word G4151 pneuma, which simply means a spiritual being. Well, Okay, well, what kind of a spiritual being were they listening to? It says right there it was seducing spirits. That word for seducing right there is the Greek word G4108, planos, which means deceiver, imposter, misleading, seducing, wandering, roving, leading into error. And what do these seducing spirits preach and teach? It says, and doctrines of devils. The word for doctrines right there is G1319, didaskaleo, which means teaching, learning, instruction, and precept. That word for devils right there is G1140, daimonion, which means evil spirits or messengers and ministers of the devil, used of the Jewish meaning of a demon, evil spirit or demon subject to Satan, a demonic being. Now, why am I highlighting this and focusing on this? Because I'm telling you, if you start straining with all of your might and all of your heart to hear the voice of God, and you are desperate to hear the voice of God, and you can't have a relationship with Him outside of having that discernible, audible voice all the time. And I get it. Hold on. I get it because I hear people, and I may have even said it myself, that God is talking all the time. But He may be talking to you through life experiences. He may be highlighting a bird in a tree or talking to you about a deer over there in the pasture. He could be just highlighting things to you and speaking to you through objects. It does not mean that He is talking to you in a discernible thought or a discernible voice or an audible voice. And if you get desperate and crazy going after the voice of God, and I've got to hear the voice of God to the extent that you start straining and trying to struggle with and discern every thought and every voice you hear, you will open yourself up to seducing spirits. Now, I also want you to notice that seducing spirits are the spirits that are preaching the false doctrine, 
So you may end up listening to a demon spirit because you're straining at every voice and you don't want to miss the voice of God. So you don't want to be disobedient. So you need to dwell on this thought. Well, it might be from a seducing spirit. And also you may end up listening to a friend or someone else who has listened to a seducing spirit. And therefore you listen. Oh, that sounds like a good doctrine. You know what? I think that's probably, you know what? I think that is true. That might be true. And you're listening to somebody else who comes along with a doctrine of a devil who got it from a seducing spirit. So we're struggling and wrestling with two different things. We're wrestling with listening to seducing spirits ourselves because we want to hear voices. And then we're also struggling with the doctrines of devils because other people may be listening to seducing spirits and coming up with stuff that's anti-Bible and you're listening to it, and it's actually a doctrine of the devil and unbiblical and does not line up with the concept, precepts, and principles of the Bible at all. I want to go ahead and just bring this video to a close because I want to keep it kind of short, but let me give you this takeaway out of this video, and that is this. So many times I think people can get caught up in like, I've got to hear the voice of God because this person said they hurt God and this one's hearing God and everybody's hearing God all the time. And all they talk about is all the things that God's talking about all the time. And this one's caught up to heaven and this one had a vision. And you can get so hung up and strung up into that, that you actually end up in error instead of just being rooted and grounded in your relationship with God. And if a vision comes, a vision comes. If a voice comes from God and the spirit and life minister to you and there's a burning in your heart that it's a witness from the Lord, that it's God's voice, then let it come. If God is highlighting and you showing you things in life, then let it come and let the discernment come. But be careful about seeking visions and voices and going out because there will be seducing spirits that will want to come alongside of you to help you and they'll lead you astray. Now, the way that I would like to let you know that the Lord has primarily directed me in my life, and this takes a lot of the weight and the pressure off of you and puts it on the Lord, but the way that I have seen a primary driver that God is giving me his voice and direction with is what is in Proverbs chapter 3 when it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In other words, don't lean to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. What am I saying? When you have a relationship with God and you are seeking God and pursuing God, God will find you. But not only will he find you, but you will end up at the right place at the right time talking to the right people about the right situation and the right opportunity presents itself and you come out smelling like a rose. You are blessed. You are highly favored. You make the money. You land the business deal. You start the business. You get the car. You get the new house. You get the money. You get the job, whatever it is, because God directed you and had you talk to the right people and you're going down the road and you're missing obstacles and you're avoiding this voice and you're avoiding this situation because God directing you can actually be on the flip side also. You made a wrong turn and you're mad and upset about it, but God saved you from a car wreck. You had a bad feeling about somebody and you're like, I don't know whether I should trust them or not. And you didn't trust them. And you find out a year or two later, you know what, man, thank God I did not trust that person because they were a liar and a hypocrite. Somebody tells you something and you didn't feel good about it and you didn't act upon it. And you said, thank God later because you found out they were a liar and they were deceiving you. What's my point? The primary way you should hear the voice of the Lord is to allow God to direct your path. You get a hold of the word of God and you start living your life according to the principles and the precepts of God's holy word. And if you hear a voice and if you hear a thought and if some impression comes to you or you are having some kind of vision or something, did it make you alive on the inside? Did it quicken you? Was there a Holy Ghost kind of fire that come up in you and you said, oh man, I know that that was the voice of God. It was a burning inside of me when I read that scripture, when I heard that voice, when I had that thought, I know it's from the Lord because there was a quickening in my spirit and there was a fire burning on the inside of me. And there was that voice or that, that conviction that came with it that I know it was the Lord. When that word or that voice or that thought comes to you, did it have an authenticity that rang true with you in your spirit 
that this is the voice of the Lord. I recognize that voice because I have discerned it in other places and at other times. And I'll also say this, that something you can do is you can back check and back test, fact check the voice that came. When the answer comes or the miracle comes and you know for sure that it was the Lord talking to you, you can go back and say, okay, wait a second. When I heard it or saw it or felt it, whatever it was, this is how it came. This is what it sounded like. This was the response that I had in my spirit. My spirit was alive. There was a quickening to me. I felt alive. I felt life. I felt, and I have made a video about this, but you can actually test the voices and thoughts against the fruits of the spirit. I've made a whole video about that. Do you have peace with the voice? Is the voice long suffering? Is there goodness and truth associated with it? What is the impression and feeling that you have associated with it? And does it line up with the fruits of the spirit, which is God's nature and character? Amen. God bless you. I pray this has been a blessing to you, but let me just summarize again to make sure you absolutely understand what I'm saying. When you want to discern, recognize, and know, and validate the voice of the Lord, there will be a quickening or a burning on the inside of you. If you do not have some kind of sensation where you have a spirit of life, where it's life-giving, whether it's a positive or a negative word, if there is not a spirit of life that comes with the word, then you can also check that word with the fruits of the Spirit. Does it line up with the nature and the character of God? If you have, it kind of just irritates you and kind of aggravates you and upsets you, and maybe you even start getting fidgety or dropping things, you might ought to pay attention to the thought you just have. Because if it's the voice of the Lord, you're not going to get irritated, agitated, aggravated, and start shaking and having weird physical manifestations. Those are actually signs of a demon spirit. And so the people on the road to Emmaus, the two disciples there, they said, did not our heart burn within us when we were hearing his words? When that voice or thought comes to you, is there a burning on the inside of you, a conviction that validates that, yea, verily, this is the truth, and I feel alive, and I feel life inside of what I heard? Quit seeking so many voices and try to quit chasing so many visions. And be careful because the devil will give you voices and the devil will give you visions if you are seeking those and looking for those. In fact, the Bible even warns us, be careful because the devil can make himself appear as an angel of light and deceive you. So be very careful. Here's what I want you to do. Just put your head down, get into the Word of God, start pursuing and chasing God, live according to the biblical principles of God, get in prayer, pray. If you want to fast, fast, but be even be careful of fasting because you can get off track with fasting. Be careful about those and then say, God, you know what? I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I'm going to trust that you're going to direct my paths. You're going to put me in the right place at the right time, talking to the right people, doing the right thing. And you're going to lead me and guide me, Lord. You're going to show me things. And I'm going to wait till I feel that quickening. I'm going to wait till I feel Shana. I'm almost Zikia. I'm going to wait till I feel that burning and that confirmation of the Holy Ghost inside of me that what I just heard and what I just felt or what I just saw was from the Lord himself. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sticking through this video with me. I pray it was a blessing to you. You pray for me and I'll be praying for you. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you in the next one. I love you. Bye-bye.